We're on to letter I of solid, and that is the interface segregation principle. And this one's not too bad. It's fairly straightforward and easy to understand as long as you have a good example. And I think I've got one which demonstrates it quite sufficiently. So let's just have a look at what the principle says. And that is no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use. I elaborated on that a little bit further. So ISP aims to split large interfaces into smaller and more specific ones so that clients only need to know about the methods that are of interest to them. And this will make more sense when we look at the example. But what problems does this try to solve? It prevents a class from carrying unwanted dependencies and methods which it does not use. It keeps code robust and easy to maintain. And also it reduces the risk of bugs due to changes in unrelated methods affecting classes that shouldn't logically be affected. Yeah, that last one was a bit of a mouthful. Admittedly, I got that one from ChatGPT, but I kind of liked it. Uh, and so the last one that I've added here is that ISP can be quite related to single responsibility because if you have an interface with lots and lots of methods, there's a good chance that if you were to implement those, your object would be breaking single responsibility more than if you were just implementing an interface which only had one or two methods with related functionality. So that's why I've added that one there. Okay, so here is the example. All we want to do here is take a file, so that will be source, archive it to a destination, which will be like the new file name after it has been compressed. So we're taking a file and we're archiving it simply by compressing its contents uh, and saving to a new file location. And then the third argument for this archive file function is an instance of file operation interface, which I've called file archiver. So file archiver describes what we are trying to do here, doesn't it? However, this name file operation interface, these kind of names should be a bit of a red flag uh, because you want your sort of your service classes to or your service class interfaces to have names which describe what they do. So if you see a sort of vague sounding name here, there's a good chance it's asking you to do lots of things. And if we go and have a look at this, then we can see it's asking us to do lots of things. So here we have all these methods which are related to operations which you can perform on a file. However, we only want to archive the file. Both these actions here are related to that one single uh, action or one single responsibility of archiving the file. However, if we want to go and create a file archiver object that implements this, it means we also need to implement all of these methods. So that's pretty painful and it's something which we want to avoid. And if we go back to the uh, additional sort of description which I added here, we said that ISP aims to split large interfaces into smaller and more specific ones so that clients only need to know about the methods that are of interest to them. And the only methods which are of interest to us here are read and compress. Okay, so we're going to take this as the starting point for our solution. We're gonna split the interface into smaller, more specific ones. And the best way to do that will be according to the problem which you are trying to solve. In our case, what we want to do is archive a file. And we only need two of these methods in order to do that. That will be read and also compress. So what we're going to do here is create a smaller interface which contains all only those methods. And we're going to name it appropriately. We'll call this file archiver interface. And so I've worked ahead and this is what I've come up with. File archiver interface. I think you'll agree this is much better, be much easy, easier for a client to use and to implement. And it's much more focused on the task in hand, which is just reading a file, grabbing the contents and compressing it to another destination. Back in the client code, here is the archive file function. And you'll notice now that I've updated the signature so that the third parameter is the file archiver interface. And you'll notice that there's more of a closeness between the name of the object and the interface. Now, this is no longer vague and we've got a good description of what this will do. 
it's to the point and there's no ambiguity. So I also created a file archiver which implements that interface. So we have the two methods on here, read. Don't really need to know much about the details, but we'll demo this in a second and then compress. Okay, so for completeness, let's have a demo. I've uh, created or I've instantiated a file archiver. We're calling the archive file function. Uh, we're passing in example text, example txt. So I've created that file here in the same folder as the one where this um, code is. And then we're saying we want to compress this to this file location here, example.txt.gz. And then we're also passing in the file archiver, which is the third parameter to the archive file method. So if we go and run this, we get the success message here, which I added to the archive file function. And you'll see that we get the example.txt compressed file in the sidebar there. Let's return to the definition and check some things off. So no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use. So now we've updated our clients to depend on only the methods which is going to use. And we split the large interface into smaller, more specific ones, ones which were specific to the task which we wanted to achieve. What problems does this solve? Prevents a class carrying unwanted dependencies and methods which it does not use. Check. Keeps code robust and easy to maintain. Goes without saying that code will be more robust and easy to maintain if it only contains two methods rather than ten methods to perform simple tasks. And then uh, we reduce the risk of bugs due to changes in unrelated methods. So there would be would have been lots of unrelated methods which we would have had to implement in all of the classes which were uh, sort of implementing that object, which was, I forget the name of it now, our file operation interface. Like I say, all those methods on there gives you a higher chance of uh, bringing bugs into your code. And then we said we're more likely to adhere to single responsibility. And the methods which we used on this file archiver interface were all related to the responsibility of the actual object, the file archiver. And so we've adhered to single responsibility there, which would have been very hard using that original uh, interface, which we looked at to achieve this simple task. So I think overall there, we've come up with a nice solution and we've avoided having to use this interface here, which has been a clear breach of ISP.